Hello, I'm here with Dr. Hamid Tajeddin, one of the founder of Achare, one of the best uh, startup that we have in Iran. Could you please introduce yourself and give us a brief about your company? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Hamid Tajeddin. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder co of San Agustar Sabs, which is the company that owns 100% of Achare as a trademark. Uh, we started Achare in 2015, I think, when I was doing my PhD in Canada. So I came here in a summer, and during that trip, I thought about uh, founding a startup with my co-founders, Bahman and Hassan. And uh, we thought about, you know, different ideas, but we knew that we wanted to start this company, so uh, we teamed up. And we started working together. At the time, we didn't have the idea, but uh, after a while, when we worked on different uh, ideas and you know uh, different products, we thought that maybe Achar is uh, one of the opportunities in the untapped market of professional services in Iran. So we started with an MVP, uh, and we worked for a year, and then we we could uh, raise about $1 million of funding after a year of uh, working on the product. Okay, uh, can I ask, uh, who was the first uh, investor of Achare? Uh, so the, when you say the first investor, I, I think the first investors are the founders which dedicate their time and resources. But in terms of bringing in financial resources, the first uh, round was done by two individual angel investors, uh, both of them Iranian, one of them international um, businessman, the other one Iranian businessman. I, I, know, I knew one of them be back uh, from my undergrad studies in Sharif University. He was uh, one of our professors at electrical engineering school. And the other one, I came to know him via uh, vice presidents of uh, science and technology, Mr. Um, Satari at the time, he was the VPSD of uh, Pre President Rouhani. So um, there was an event for Iranian students outside Iran. So we were invited and then we presented our case. So we were elected and they facilitated our connection to some potential investors, one of which we could uh, reach a deal and we followed on with negotiations back in Iran. It took us around two months, I think, to close the deal. And then we brought in two investors at the same time uh, in the pre-seed money in the amount that I just said. Okay, after eight years, almost, yeah. uh, you have more than two million us users. Yeah. That's a great growth. Thank you. Uh, but when you establish a holding, to run another startups. Because as I see here, you have five other startups. Achare, 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 Achare Bazaar, Achare. Uh, could you please brief, give us a brief about those startups too? Sure. So when we started, we had two products in the same com company. And we worked uh, in a kind of hybrid organization in which we have two products. And then we have two First, we started with uh, dedicating, you know, shared resources to both products. But as the time went on, we realized that this did not work. So we had to separate the teams. We had de dedicated teams. And after a while, we, uh, we had to actually separate the legal entities of these two startups. Um, so we ended up with Achare and uh, another product that is less known probably to the uh, user base of Achare, but it's called Ubar, and it's for the companies, enterprises, for their logistics. So it's another platform, but in a different industry. We initially started with these two, and then given the growth and success of Achare, we realized that we could somehow brown, branch out a part of Achare, which targets enterprises, and uh, we thought that we could provide enterprise services because the requirements for enterprises are different. They want, you know, different billing system. They want different uh, 
uh, management style. They, they have their own services systems and you have to integrate your software into their software. So these requirements all made us uh, think about branching out a part of Achar into Achar Enterprise. And now we call it, we started with Achar Enterprise, but since Achar is an Iranian name, we ended up with Achar Sazen. So that's the sister company of Achar basically, but for a different market. And then along the way, we realized that since we have the professional services platform, we could provide the goods and uh, you know, the equipments and the tools that service providers need. And that is another untapped market in Iran. And uh, we realized that it's an opportunity for us to enter that market now that we have 2 million users and we have uh, more, you know, thousands of daily orders uh, which require these goods and equipments. So we, uh, we thought that we could work on that as another product. Right now, it's not, uh, it's not um, at the latest stage of its maturity. It's at earlier stages. We call that still a SVU inside Achara. But uh, that's another product. We call it Achara Bazaar, which tries to uh, connect the users which can be Achari users and service providers, both to uh, market players which provide goods and equipments for uh, constructions and you know, buildings. What's your uh, target? Because as you know, Snap is a super application. And are you following that route? Well, basically, Achari itself can be considered as a super app because when you think about Achari, um, Achari is not just one service. When you consider Snap itself as the ride hailing app, it's just one platform. There are passengers and then there are, there are drivers and then you come in as a platform, you connect the two and voila, you have a platform. But Achari is a different story because starting with cleaning services, we expanded into different verticals. And when you have these different verticals, you have your you know, inherently faced with a super app, whether you want to call it or not. But if you open up the application in Achari, you see that there is cleaning services. There is there's a lot uh, of services. Repair services. Yes, exactly. So all these services are somehow representing a super app, even though we don't call it a super app. So because of the variety of these verticals, Achari is inherently a super app. But beyond that, because of different uh, target uh, markets, for example, when you talk about individuals, then you have Achara. When you talk about enterprises, you're talking about Achara Saze. And when you talk about goods and equipments, you're talking about Achara Bazaar. Now, if you bring all these together, now you have a super app that can be recognized by, by anyone who is not even familiar with the concept, as I said, because we consider Achara as an as a super app in its nature, but by expansions that we have experienced so far, uh, we see that uh, this is basically turning out to be a super app, uh, either we call it or not. Uh, how many competitors do you have in Iran? Uh, with Achare? Yes. We have, so there was a time five or six years ago I think a lot of people were attracted to this part of the market. So when you think about platforms, uh, you have low-hanging fruits, uh, uh, so-called low-hanging mm -hmm. fruits, which are the easier platforms, which are uh, very quick to initiate and then to launch. For example, ride hailing, for example, hospitality, and uh, a lot of fintech platforms. And then you have more difficult platforms, which are kind of uh, high-hanging fruits. Um, and the professional services happen to be one of them. So when we started with that, a lot of young entrepreneurs, I think, and a lot of young uh, students who wanted to initiate and found a platform didn't know about the difficulties associated with such platforms. They started with a part or a niche market in professional services, for example, cleaning or repair or something else. But uh, what they didn't realize was that this doesn't work unless you have a macro market, one-stop shop for everything. So we saw a lot of these uh, 
attempts to found something similar and then they all um, turned out to be another failure which is a kind of learning for them of course but in terms of similar platforms with the same ambition that we started uh, we have had less than you know the number of fingers in a hand and I think right now we are in negotiations of merger and acquisition with two of them. And basically, we may have just one or two competitors uh, which are actually you know, competing in the same market with the same business model as we do. But uh, again, in terms of the scale, we are probably five times or six times as big as they are. Okay. Uh, you have more than 100 employees. Here. In Achare? In Achare. Yeah. And uh, if you want to say something about your human resource, what's your culture in your company? Well, um, the culture in Achare, I think, is cultivated by a kind of nurturing environment in which people think that everyone who is uh, a part of this team tries to provide a service. So we are very service-oriented in terms of mentality. Our people are very dedicated to providing uh, uh, the best of their own, the best of uh, their A-games. They bring their A-games to the table. And I think um, we are, as an organization, we are uh, very focused on teamwork and uh, to work with different ideas, provide uh, facilitating environment in which people can, you know, uh, flourish their ideas and work together. And the, the basic idea is that anyone who wants to work in Achare needs to have this kind of service mentality. And uh, whenever someone joins the team, uh, we have had good experience uh, with this, uh, putting people into our, the, the touch point with the customer where the, their interaction with the customer is, because there is a lot of learning for them. Uh, and we actually do it. Like uh, me, myself, my co-founders, we all have tried somehow to be in the interaction between service providers and uh, customers to re really understand the nuances of such interactions so that we, you can design the platform to capture those nuances and to facilitate those interactions. Your main office is in the capital, Tehran. Yeah. Do you have any office in other uh, areas? Uh, we don't have offices that are owned by the HQ, but uh, we do have partners. We have local partners in other provinces of Iran. Uh, we have in big major cities, Karaj, Shiraz, Esfahan, Mashhad, and uh, some smaller cities, almost 30 cities. We are uh, active in almost 30 cities. And the model is a kind of partnership with uh, local investors who are interested in the business that we do, and they want to be a partner. So uh, we have managed uh, our expansion to different cities in, in that model, a kind of franchise model. Uh, you studied at Platform. And you came to Iran after you finished your study. Can I ask, what was your idea to come back and create something? Do you think to something very special or you are just doing? So um, I get asked this question a lot. The reason that I came back was not to found Achare or to be an entrepreneur. The reason for me to come back was very personal. It's just the decision that anybody has to make where they want to live. And at the time when I finished my studies, I, you know, I made an assessment of the opportunities and, you know, the gains and the losses and everything, pros and cons of living abroad, being at home and things like that. And I came to the conclusion that I wanted to be in Iran with my family. And that was the main reason, to be close to my family. Do you know why? And then when I came back, I started working with uh, you know, my co-founders to work on Archer. Uh, we are talking about our expert that we are losing right now. And some experts, when they came back to the Iran, they 
establish something like Achare, and we have seen it a lot in Iran right now. For example, Hadi Farnud, as you know. And uh, there is a, a lot of opportunity because we have a lot of lack of uh, services and uh, platforms. But about you, study at platform is make, is make me curious about your field. You know, because platform is nothing that everybody wants to read about it. But you followed that road and then came to Iran and run a business as an entrepreneur. Uh, how big was, how, uh, let me ask this question like this, how platform study could help you to run a business? Okay. Um, it's, it was just coincidental. It, there was nothing planned and... Uh, my area of focus in my PhD was business administration, but my papers were somehow related to platforms because of the, you know, uh, the strength in that business model. And I teach that at Sharif University. I, I offer this course for MBA students to see what, uh, you know, the strength and uh, the potential of that business model is. But why I started at Sharif, it was just coincidental. It, it had not, well, I, I can't say that it had nothing to do with uh, the platforms that I studied because when I talked to my co-founders, I told them that there is huge benefits for founding a plat platform because um, they are inherently interesting business models and because of the, their growth, because of their network uh, effects and things like that. But uh, I think I was biased in a way because of my studies, but at the same time we realized that, uh, okay, this is a trend. And why I studied that in, during my PhD was that this was a trend, this was a global trend. So something is good, something is applied in various industries and people are seeing the results, the success stories are coming out. So you, say, you see an opportunity and you say, okay, there is an untapped market here in Iran. We can, you know, replicate that business model, and you know, you can reap the benefits of a very good business model. I'm not sure that you agree with me or not. Most of our startups are high copy of another companies in a global market. Yeah. Was Achare a high copy of a company or not? Well, uh, let me rephrase what you're saying like this. You're saying that a lot of good platforms that we have in Iran have a better version, probably better funded version, probably more successful version outside of Iran in an in in international setting. And that is true. And it's not just uh, limited to Iran. It's for all, you know, developing countries or third world countries. And it's because the resources of the, the global resources are at, you know, the first world countries. So they have more resources to play with, to try and see which ones work. And then once they have the results, uh, you see the success out of many failures, out of many, many failures with uh, a lot of resources that was spent to understand and to discover the one that was actually working. Now that we have the dominant model, so we can, you know, avoid paying the same uh, expense to achieve the same result. And this works. And it's okay. There is no problem. Achara, yeah, of course, we have a lot of similar platforms in Iran, in Europe, in Asia. And actually, we have been to, the com to a company which is similar to... Uh, Achare, but was active in China. We went there. We went to their uh, to the to their office. I had a talk with their CEO before going uh, public in NYSE, and uh, it's a. I think it it was four years ago. So we had a talk. We ha we are dealing with the same challenges. So because they have more financial resources, we can avoid paying a lot of expense because we are limited in terms of accessing. Uh, financial resources that they do. So um, you can replicate the business model that is successful in another country and you can avoid the paying you know, high expenses. And uh, I don't have any problem with that. And I think it's the best way to do it. You shouldn't, because you don't have the luxury 
of those developed countries. You don't have that much uh, available resources to play with to try and see which one works. You know, I ask this question because you change the culture. We have some cleaning service for Nowruz, our uh, New Year anniversary, and all the moms and family clean the house and clean the rooms everywhere. And you had a lot of risk to change this culture. You yeah. can call someone to clean your house for your, and uh, you don't want to. You don't need to do anything. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the obstacle that you had and challenge that you uh, faced within. Well, there, there are a lot of obstacles in terms of changing the, you know, the user behavior. Uh, you're right. This, this is something common. We have, we have been doing this for, you know, mille, thousands of years. Yes, of course. But uh, once you want to modernize that kind of mentality, you face huge obstacles in terms of user behavior, in terms of adoption, in terms of uh, regulating the behavior of service providers, not just uh, on the demand side, but also on the supply side. Um, we, there were numerous um, challenges that we, uh, we faced at the beginning, but we knew that uh, this is something that has worked outside Iran. And uh, we started with cleaning, uh, quite frankly talking. We started with cleaning because it was the easiest to bring the easiest service that you can bring onto the platform. But uh, we knew at the beginning that this goes beyond cleaning services. And now we have 300 services, one or two of which are cleaning services. We have carpet cleaning, dry cleaning, and then we have uh, house cleaning, and that's it, like five cleaning services and 295 other services, all of which are platform is and And uh, uh, they are platform is a is something that we use but it's not probably a verb in uh, English it's something that are brought up and brought into the platform so uh, of the challenges that we faced first was you know changing the behavior of users in terms of put, registering a service Re you know uh, requesting a taxi service is easy you tap where you are you tap where you want to go and you tap as an agreement to the price that you are shown on the app. That's it. So three taps, you get a ride. And that was, I think, one of the ads for Uber. Two taps and you get a ride. And that is the, you know, uh, uh, the beauty of this service on a platform. But for professional services, it's not like that. You need, we need not your location, but your address. We don't need your building, but we need, we need to know the unit in which you live. What uh, the the floor that which floor are you residing? Uh, what is the unit number? And uh, what is the square meter of the the house? Uh, for example, if you want a paint job, we need to know exactly the square meter of the house, the kind of uh, paint that you want. There is a lot of varieties in service. There is details about the location of the service. And then there is, uh, uh, there is a variety in terms of the service providers because, you know, when you want to go from point A to point B, there is not that much of a difference that, you know, we can uh, offer you. But if you want to get this um, room painted or decorated, we can do it with a low budget or we can do it 100 times the budget that you asked for, but we can make you something... Uh, that you wouldn't even imagine. So this variety, how can you capture that on a platform? That is one challenge. It's on demand side. On the service provider side, again, you have the difficulties of saying, okay, I know that you have been paid in cash for 20 years, but from now on, when you go to the customer side, you provide your service and you get out. Don't negotiate the price with the customer. We are here. Trust us. And they don't trust you at the <laughs> so beginning. And it's really <laughs> difficult. So on the demand side, somehow shaping the behavior of service providers was uh, something that we had to deal with. And then there is the regula regulatory body. 
uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the government. Who are you? Why are you providing this service? Uh, are you responsible for the service or you're not? What do you mean you are a platform? So we have been in uh, a few cases. Uh, we have had uh, some complaints that were uh, somehow escalated into judiciary system of the government of the country. So we had to go and talk to the judge and say, okay, we are just a platform. We didn't provide the service. There was this guy who provided some certificates by which we verified his, you know, his service quality and we let him go provide that service to customer B who is actually now complaining and saying that, you know, he didn't do a good job. So these are, you know, more of the challenges that you face as uh, someone who is dealing with a platform which is a high hanging fruit, not a low hanging fruit. Yes, of course. And uh, that's my last question. Are you thinking about global markets? Yeah, we do think about global markets, but we think about it in terms of our neighbors and the region. So um, we think about our neighbors in the south, uh, Arab countries, and then uh, our Arab neighbors. And then we think about our na neighbors in the north. Uh, more we are leaning towards more um, north, our northern uh, neighbors than our southern neighbors because uh, we think that uh, that market is still untapped and that could be a segue to reach the uh, European countries. Thank you. If you have any word, you, it's your time. And we Thank are you very much. I hope that uh, uh, everyone who has used Achare uh, can provide their feedback so that we can work on this service and make it better. And if you haven't used Dacharya, you can download the app. Even if you are not in Iran, you can use the, the app for your relatives in Iran and, you know, provide their uh, service for them. And uh, thank you very much for having us. Thank you and thank you.